City. It's the Wendy Williams Show. Let's go, it's time for Hot Topics. send Patti LaBelle home. Okay, so The Masked Singer was on last night. You know, that's my show. Patti was dressed as a flower and people already guessed that it was Patti LaBelle. I, like, it's hard to disguise a Patti LaBelle voice. I mean, they had her sing an Eye of the Tiger, you know, that Rocky song? And, and somebody in my morning meeting was like, well, why do they have her sing that as well as Nine to Five, the Dolly Parton song? I said, because those are two songs where Patty can't hit those notes where you know it's Patty. Like, you know, I of the tiger. <laughs> right. You're not gonna guess it's Patty, but people guess. And some fans thought that she sounded tired and didn't really bring it. Aww. Well, here's my thing. First of all, when you get to be 70 something years old, there's a little bit of tie in your yard. <laughs> you, know, you know what I'm saying? Number one. Number two, um, Okay. I do agree with people who suggested that she was only there for a particular amount of episodes. She signed on to make a particular amount of money. Patty is still saving, you know, she's retired-ish. You know what I'm saying? So she went on, she committed to five weeks. Uh, that's what people are speculating. Uh, that's what I expect uh -huh, and right. you late. Right. Yeah, <laughs> you know, and, and then so she's finally like, all right, it's me. Give me my last check and let me go home. They say she missed her dog. Well, you know, you're Patti LaBelle, you bring your dog with you. Um, but it's also Thanksgiving. And when you get to a particular point in life, you're thankful for every Thanksgiving. She's gotta make those pies so you guys can buy them. <laughs> you know? <laughs> She's a wonderful cook. I just. You know, I love this show, The Masked Singer, because they've got the nerve, and I mean this in a good way, to send people home like Patti LaBelle, or like Gladys Knight the other week, lost to T-Pain. That was last year. <laughs> lost to T-Pain. How is T-Pain out singing Gladys Knight? Okay. Masked Singer, Nick Cannon, all you all, you all have a lot of nerve, and I'm here for it. I am here for it. In the meantime, Patti lost to the leopard. And, and people think, oh, isn't that fan, is the Cartier fabulosity? Okay. Those who know what I said know, those who don't, don't count. Um, anyway, um, they think that the leopard is Seal. Now, do you know, do you know Seal's voice? Like I know Kiss of a Rose, but do you really know Seal's voice to know that? I don't know. Clap if you watch The Masked Singer though. Okay. Yeah. So it's our show. Listen, you got to get in on this show. It's so wrong, but so right. <laughs> Wednesdays on Fox. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Doug. Oh my gosh, I was look I was looking for my uh, lozenge. After all, eleven years, people are still asking, "What do you put in your tea?" I assume that these are new watchers. You know what I mean, Suzanne. Yeah, 
absolutely new watchers. Yeah, like you've been doing this for eleven years. Yeah, they and should from know. the first day. Exactly. No, mm -hmm. and and just like Suzanne mm -hmm. loves around mint. Yeah, every right yeah. before the show, I put a mint in, and, and it lasts through like the first fifteen minutes. Of yeah, my well, right before the show, I put yeah. an out. I yes. put two Altoids, yes. one in each jaw, yes. Yes. and I'm standing on the star, yes. and the the song is going. Yeah. And right before they say, "Here's Wendy," I crunch it up, and huh? I, at least I digest it. What, what? What's up with no, you? No, I savor it. Okay. Suck on it for a long time. <laughs> wow! <laughs> Jussie Smollett, if you just let it go, we'd forget all about you. Now see, he's still maintaining he's innocent, you all. Uh, 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 clap if you think Jussie is innocent. Oh, all five of you. And we are a very open group here. So, Jesse, sit down. Look, remember, remember Chicago, my fave city, um, after New York, um, and LA, and Dallas, and Miami. No, I lo uh, you know I love Chicago. The food is good and the men are strong. Um, <laughs> um, he sued, he, um, the city of Chicago sued Jesse for $130,000 for making false claims about him. You know, that, you know, he set it up and he, you, you, uh. now Jussie is counter suing Chicago. Oh, well now, now look, look, he's maintaining that he was attacked by a white man. He was attacked by a white man. He claims that the city made it look like he masterminded his own attack. In the meantime, Jussie, have you not seen the pictures? Because I'll remind you of this one right here while the two African brothers were buying. Okay, no, I want to see the counter with the red hat. What else they buy? A yeah, knife? The red hat and the rope. And the rope. Okay, no, show you that. that. You right? can't show it? Yeah, we have that. Well, show it. Yeah. Show it. There you go. There's the red hat, the rope. Like, they're the two African brothers. Jussie, have several seats and never come back. You're ruining your own future, you know? Like, you're ruining your own future for the potential to act ever again, you know? Cause you're making so much noise. Like, if I was doing a sitcom and I knew that he was part of it, I would just be like, ew, just because of ew. You know, and then unwarranted paparazzi outside. They're not here for, you know, the stars of the show or what the show's about. They're here to stalk you. If I was doing a movie, I wouldn't even want you to be a bit player or a less than five. I learned that. That's when you have less. <laughs> <laughs> That's when you do a movie, darling, and you have less than five lines. <laughs> you, you still get a paycheck, but it's not that big. Hey, you know what? Um, Glam Squad, please report to the dance floor. No, no, hold on. I'm done with Jesse. I have something else to argue about. Glam Squad, all of yous, including Chanel. Yes, report to the dance floor immediately. Okay. Get in the frame, you see the frame. Get in here. They had no idea this was going to happen. Nobody knew Suzanne. But, well, you wanna know what? It's about time this is done. Oh gosh. Quilly Sinclair, report to the further dance floor. Mm -hmm. Come okay. on. All right. I'll okay. Now, I will introduce each one of you to my entire glam squad. Now, we've got a lot of glamorous things that go on here with the show. A lot of good makeup people, Suzanne, and hair Careful. people, and, and wardrobe people. Mm -hmm. But these are my people. Morel. Oh. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh yeah! Morel Holler. He's my, eye, he's my guy, he never sat my lashes, never gave me pimples, and he's been with me since the first day of the six week sneak peek. I didn't know this man, but now I love him like family, okay? He's been to my house, he's been to my apartment, he's met my parents, he, we've done, we traveled the world together. Okay, this is um, Dominic. Dominic, how's my hair look? <laughs> Dominic is my new hair uh, stylist, and, and, and we have a lot of great people. But there is only one Dominic Santiago and he's mine, okay? <laughs> then there is Chanel. Chanel is my wardrobe assistant. Yep. 
Chanel helps me snap my body suits when I can't see over my boobs. <laughs> and, um, and, and helps Willie Sinclair oh, pick out all of my clothing. <laughs> Willie. <laughs> now, Willie, yeah. I apologize to you all for bringing all of you out here, I, but I didn't want Willie to shine alone. Otherwise, they get very upset. <laughs> okay. Um, look, Willie, people are still asking me about why I wear sneakers with every damn thing. And you're gonna stop with that. And I, I've explained it on the after show, I've explained it in a segment, uh, but now I'm explaining it in your face right here on Hot Topics. Willie, talk to these people. By the way, what am I wearing today? She is wearing, oh, thank you. She's wearing that, that, that spring 2020 like. iceberg head to toe for a look. She can. <laughs> Now, I remember Iceberg from back in the day though, don't you? This is, the, this is not even out. We have to return this to the Iceberg. <laughs> like, Willie buys things, he borrows things, and he, he does things. And you have to make it work. She has lymphedema, so we can't slip into the glittery flats that we used to do. Because I wear a size 11, 12. Exactly. Explain so. to them why I wear sneakers all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Go. <laughs> because of the lymphedema, it causes swelling in the ankles, so we can't slip into those delicate flats anymore. So we make the best of it, and we f buy the flyest sneakers, like. <laughs> Willie? Willie? Yes? With that massive wardrobe budget that you handle for me, <laughs> um, why don't you get my shoes made for me? Why don't you get some <laughs> delicate flats made for me? because we do have a budget and we can't just have all of these shoes just custom made from Italy and Paris and everything. Because I'd like rather that. have other custom made stuff. For sure, like, like, for like sure. Like clothing. Like poofs and things of that nature. Yup. <laughs> anyway. So now they know. Well, and in conclusion, now they know because everybody's like, like yesterday's mustard mm -hmm. dress. Mm -hmm. People are like, I love your dress, but why are you always wearing sneakers? Mm -hmm. You're always asking the same stupid questions. <laughs> so now, Mr. Sinclair has explained. Morel has my lip gloss. It's good. Okay, it's good. hair. Good. Okay. <laughs> All right, Glam Squad, descend. Like, I'm tired of it, Suzanne. Uh -huh, I get it. I'm tired of yeah, it. Well, you told them, and now they know. And, and well, you know mm -hmm. what? I felt as though it had to be on Hot Topics mm -hmm. with a mild read mm -hmm. from the people who understand mm -hmm. how to support me mm -hmm. as I am 11 years older with Morel with the makeup. Mm -hmm. He contours hard. I'm not bleaching my skin. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and the, the sneaker thing, though, is like a big deal to you guys. So get over it. I'm yeah. not wearing shoes ever again. Okay? All right. It is All not right. terrible. But when you look at my feet, you're gonna want what I have on. God, he doesn't just put me in any old thing. All right, thank you, Iceberg, too, by the way. Um, and Chuck D, I'm not finished. <laughs> Report to the dance floor. I mean, no, no, not this dance floor. I mean, watching TV. Okay, so Chuck D, who I love, public enemy number one and all that, He's blasting Jerry Springer and Maury Povich, right? In a tweet, he accused them both of exploiting young black men for ratings and taking money from the government. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I know, I know, wait, hold on now. First of all, I am a watcher of both shows. <laughs> <laughs> Norman, the glams told it like it is though, right? They did. They did such a nice job, like, uh, verbalizing. Y yeah, well, yeah. They're, they're good verbalists. Right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tired of it though, Norman, you know what right. I'm saying? Yeah, you gotta fight the power. That big. Right. All right, back to Chuck D, okay. <laughs> look, look, look at here, Chuck. First of all, there wouldn't be a Maury or a Jerry if black men didn't volunteer to go on there and show their asses.
Number two, I see just as much white trash as black trash on the show. So where are we going with this argument? And Asian and Indian people, you are a rarity. You, all, you are very smart. Stay, stay, stay out. You, I know you watch and you laugh along at, at us making asses of ourselves on TV. Look, the white and black trash Chuck D are the ones who love going to those shows. They want to get out of their Midwestern town. They want to fly to Connecticut, because that's where, <laughs> I know. <laughs> They think they're coming to New York because they look, you know, they're like, oh, it must be in New York. They're in, they're in Stamford, Connecticut. The only thing in Stamford, Connecticut is Steve Wilkos, Maury, Jerry, and now his judge show. And oh, there's a P.F. Chang. And, <laughs> I know yum, but I don't even know if that's open or not still. Look, Chuck, Sit down. <laughs> okay. And neither Maury or Jerry has commented. I don't think that they need to comment. These two men, they're not uh, prejudiced men. I know both of them personally speaking. You know, uh, um, 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 Maury's married to Connie, yeah. the Asian lady, newscaster, uh -huh. here in New York, excuse me. Jerry is married, but we never see his wife. He keeps his personal life quiet, the way you should if you don't want to be on the show, okay? <laughs> Chuck D, don't make more excuses for sometimes why black men are portrayed the way they are. You know, it's bad enough that the cops and, and people stereotyping and, and all kinds of other stuff, but we don't need you to jump in and blame Maury and Jerry. They do that very well on their own. I'm so mad that that impeachment is like, it's interrupting. Look, look, it's interrupting our show in almost every single city. I don't even know why I'm showing up for work. I, I mean, you know, here in New York, they, they keep us on, and then by 12 noon, it's impeachment again, and, 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 but it's on every single channel. There's like no good programming except Maury and Jerry. <laughs> and us, of course. I am really disgusted. What, this is day five. When is this going to, Doug, when is this going to be over? Who knows? Who knows? I never am. Because I know you watch an argument like me. Screaming at the TV, throwing stuff at the TV. Yup, yup, calling people, all kind. No, honestly, like next week is Thanksgiving. We're doing these shows where, you know, I'm wearing good clothes. Everybody reports to work, co-hosts are here. And then half the, when I look on the Googler Schmoogler, you know, at what, what, what you all are saying about the show, people are like, it didn't show today in my city. It didn't show, the impeachment's on, it didn't show. Thank God for nine o'clock for the YouTube where you can see the whole show. You know, we now upload the whole. Anyway, look, Joan Collins, who I love, she's a national treasure, a friend to this show, and, and, yeah, yeah. And I've known Joan since I was on the radio. She was one of the people who would come to my radio show and say, how you doing? <laughs> and so, look, she thinks that women should never wear jeans. What? Well, Suzanne? Wear jeans on today. I know, and you so special. I know uh -huh. you very rarely wear jeans, though. You like a legging. Yeah, yeah. And and a stretchy something. Yes, or another. yes, yes. I, I do have a bunch of jeans, though. Well, this is Joan back in the '80s when mm -hmm. she had her own jeans line. Mm -hmm. Now I didn't realize she had her own jeans line. I knew I had the Melba Moore jeans. I had the Teddy Pendergrass jeans. <laughs> I had the Sassoons, the Casherelles. You know all that stuff. But I never remember Joan Collins' jeans, and I was a big fan of Dynasty. So there, there she is back in the 80s, but, uh, and I don't know whether she means if you're a particular age, you shouldn't wear jeans, or that she's, but she doesn't like the ripped thing, which I love a ripped jean. Like, please. 
I only have a few pair of jeans. Well, I have a lot of jeans, but if you see me wear jeans, it's only because I'm just like, okay, here's jeans. The reason why is because I have very big calves. My lymphedema does not affect my calves. My calves are like 17 inches around. They're very big, they're, they're quite muscular. And, and um, then when I pull them up, you know, I have to get the size to fit my um, calves. And by the time I pull them up, it's too big on my waist. You know what I'm saying? Because I got a smaller, and then they're too big on the thighs. And, th and then if they don't grab my crotch just right, I'm not wearing them. Like, <laughs> like, I don't, I'm not a huge fan of boyfriend jeans, uh, just because I don't like that bundle there. Like, I'll tell you who wears the hell out of some jeans. There is a picture of the girls from The Real, and Adrienne Bailon, Look, look, no, 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 show her so you can see the crotch. This girl is working these jeans out, right? And they come up high, they don't look uncomfortable. They're showing femininity and, and sexiness without, you know, a but like Adrian, you are working. I don't like high waist jeans because I have a short waist. I like low waist jeans because I want to elongate my torso, you know? And then when you sit down in them, then your butt crack shows. I, I, I'm just like pulling the, I, I like a legging, but Miss um, Collins, by the way, um, thank you for your jean commentary. I agree with you, but I don't agree with you. It just depends on the body type. I think guys like girls in jeans, but guys don't know what they like. I think that what guys like, I think jeans is the word for less makeup, something casual, not oversprayed with perfume, you know, stop with the long nails pointing all out. You know what I mean? Like guys just like cat, like they like to see us natural. <laughs> but, one more thing about the iconic Joan Collins, my friend. She is the new face of Valentino, darling. Oh, oh, oh yes. Oh, oh, oh well, uh, you look at this ad. Uh, yep. Now, I would wear everything, from the tiara to the hair to the gloves to the whole, I, I'd wear everything, head to toe. All right, everybody, we got more great show for you today. Billy Bush is here. So, grab a snack. hosting a show that I love, Extra. Please welcome our friend, Billy Bush. Oh, Billy. Mm. Oh. We'll start with shoe yep. cam. Uh, 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 Go put your feet down, Billy. Oh, shoe cam. Yes. Okay, hold on. Yes, okay. Billy. You've had those for a moment. You keep them very well. I don't know if I'm tall enough. Can my feet get flat? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, aw. Only 5'10". B In boots. That's good for Hollywood. Yeah, for that Hollywood, that makes you a giant. If they shoot you from the ground, you look five, you know, 11. All right, so look, Billy and I have been going back and forth from your show to my show, and we're like we're talking through the TV, and then we text. He's in my phone, I'm in his phone. The weird thing is that I argue with you while your show is on. <laughs> well, only one time about one particular thing. But, but you actually text me back. Right. During commercial. Right, you're at 7.07 .07 is when you sent it to me. It comes on at seven o'clock in right. New York. Right, So I said, Wendy saw what she needed to see. Right. And now she's firing back. Right. Right, but my priority is you, and then it's the show. So I deal with you, and then I take care of the show. Okay. Wendy's very influential, you gotta take care of Wendy. So here's what the fight is about, and I still don't believe you. <laughs> I just wanna look at your it's body language. Fight. Okay, uh, he's saying that Lori and Massimo are not having a problem with their marriage. To me, based on the scandal, okay, she's going to jail, he might be going to jail with her, or maybe he'll escape and not go to jail and take care of their kids. I don't know. I've been hearing that they were having a divorce problem and Billy says, go ahead. I said, they're absolutely not. Sometimes a stressful situation drives people apart, but sometimes it makes them even closer. And in this case, even closer than ever before. And I am the source. Okay, okay. And you've introduced them to the leader of your church, 
Yeah. So so Massimo is an old friend of mine, and we play we play golf together, and and uh, that's our pastor in the middle with the glasses. Chad, and this is very recently, a couple of weeks ago at his 40th birthday. Mm -hmm. So, well, who's going to act up in front of their pastor? Right. But you know, I mean, I can just tell you, I know the man very deeply. We have very deep conversations. I don't know the legal ins and outs, and I don't want to, you know, I wouldn't, I don't know what's going on there, but I do know that it's a happy household. And when I see something like that happening and I know the truth, okay. even if it's unpopular to speak up for someone right. who's down in the tank, you got to do it. All right. All right. Well, when I saw something happening with you, and I think I only met you one time in my life, and then I did uh, watch you and your family from afar in the airport at the LAX one time yeah, I yeah. saw you there, and I didn't come up to you. This is before you and I ever met. And sometimes when you see some of your favorite people, instead of fanning out, although I do love a good celebrity fan out, you just stand and you look, and you stand and you observe. look and observe. Yeah. So, but when the thing happened with you and Trump in the back of the bus, I was like, look, he didn't do anything wrong. You didn't do, in my opinion. That, that's all I'm saying. Well, you said that from the beginning. And it's an awkward situation. You never know what you're going to do. It was 2005. Right. So it was a long time Before ago. the Me Too, as a matter of fact, oh, this was... might have been the kickoff yeah. to the Me Too. Well, I think a year later. Yeah. You know, after, uh, after I got fired, it was uh, 2016, October, Me Too began... October 2017, so that was a year later. Did they fire you because of that incident, or were, was trouble a brewing already? You know, I think what you, you know, just I, I think it's a combination of things, and y y there may have been, you know, some. You know, if you're, you maybe, know, if... maybe not everybody there, you yeah. know, loves your presence. You're brought in to disrupt, and all of a sudden you start disrupting, and it's disruptive. <laughs> and they're like, wait a minute, this isn't the way we do things here. And uh, not everybody was probably thrilled with me being there. And so when the opportunity came to... And that was a nice opportunity. Now, you were married at the time. <laughs> when you got home, was there, were there dishes being thrown at you and, and no, that's daughters an screaming? No, no, no. There's, there's nothing but the opposite. And that's an example of, you know, of course, it makes logical sense that that could be a headline that, oh, she hates him, she's, she's disgusted by her own husband. No, not at all. She was incredibly loving and supportive and... You know, and still, we are very, very close to this day. My, my ex-wife. Ex-wife. Um, did you have a black, uh, a black up plan? Did you have a backup plan? Like, do you know how to do other things besides gossip? No. Okay, okay. No, no, in fact, I was always like, if I was an accountant, the kids would starve. Uh, if I had to do a school teacher, we, we, kids would be dumb. I, I can't, there's nothing else I can do, I don't think. So uh, I can't even change the oil in the car. So when this, uh, I was just waiting for my time to come back. And... No, but you know what? You did it right. Because in my opinion, late, we didn't see anything from you for three full years. He stayed in the house, virtually. Yeah. At least we didn't see you around. Yeah. And you got a full body transplant. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. Mr. The Billy Bush. Real. The calves are real. Mr. Billy These Bush. Real calves, not implants, I must say. You look <laughs> fan. Fantastic. You are killing me. No, no, you really do. You're really quite desirable. And now that you, no, you're very desirable. And, and now that you're back and you're leading extra. By the way, I love that Jen Lommers. Isn't she nice? She's a New York girl who Fox went Fox. out there, yup. And, and Jen and you, she's your perfect foil. She's doing great, yeah, she's amazing. So, that's my girl, I love her. And she's got a good real body too. She goes after she's it. Got she's got a fat ass. All the events, they love her. <laughs> yeah, she's got I have a not looked. I don't know. <laughs> I don't see things like that. Well, so your divorce is now finalized. You say you get along with your ex-wife. Yeah, and she's a quarter mile away. She's and the girls are all older girls you have. Uh, tw yeah, 21. Well, that's a few years ago, but... Uh, the far left is actually the oldest. That's Josie. She's uh, 21. Uh -huh. The one next to me is Mary, and she's 19. And then Lily is uh, the little one. She's 15. 15. And that's Sydney. And so you're enjoying co-parenting? Yeah. We well, get along great. We're doing Thanksgiving together. We do Christmas Eve that's together. That's nice. Come back in the morning. We do presents together. Yeah. That's nice. Yeah. My, she's wonderful. And with your good new job, you can handle all the support. Yes. Yeah. Good. Yeah. No. All hands on deck. We're still a team. We're still actually. No, I'm talking about financial support. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it was yeah, good yeah, to be yeah. back in. Okay. okay. Oh. Although 
I'm not crying for you, because you know he's a bush, bush in the oh, bush. Oh, please. Don't you think he's sending me any, any checks? I'm not getting any. Did checks. they curse you out for the P word, uh, the talk with Trump at the back of the bus? No. Did they excommunicate you from the family? No. When you're in town, uh, which one of your cousins is with Hoda? Is that Jenna? Jenna Bush. Right. Hager. Are you gonna see Jenna while you're here? No. I'm in quickly. Uh, I'm doing a pack schedule. I see you first. Then I do all the other business. That you I don't do see your cousin, the Bush? No, I'm interviewing a couple people after uh, that's tomorrow, and then I take off and, and head back. Well, I, then I feel honored to have it's your a presence. Huge family. Oh my God. Yeah. I'm not even seeing my brother. <laughs> How close are you with them? Like, were they mad when you went into gossip instead of politics? No, um, no, because, you know, I, I consider it news. I always verify That's my sources. That's what I say. That's I, what I say. Listen, I don't, <laughs> if I don't have a confirmation on something, I don't go with it. Okay. Um, but no, my, uh, the old, my, my uncle who passed away recently, um, George Bush, 41, mm -hmm. he used to say, how's that, uh, how's that Hollywood access going when I was on the other side? Yeah, show? yeah. He couldn't get the, the, which way it went. He was always interested in what J-Lo was doing and what uh, See? Lindsay That's, Lohan was doing. Isn't it funny that yeah. even people of prominence consider our news more the real news. Yeah. Right. right, right. Jimmy Kimmel once said, the Cronkite of crap. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. I love it. I watch every night. Um, have you ever been to the gynecologist to check your girl's hymens like T.I.? Whoa! Whoa! <laughs> Whoa! We, we Wendy's gotta... driving and she doesn't <laughs> use the blinker. We just turned. <laughs> uh, I have heard the story. Yeah. Uh, no. No, uh, I do have three daughters, and I do have something I do with them. Um, uh -oh. And each, each of them at the age of four, I know, this is like, oh uh -oh. gosh, dad. Here we go. You think you feel, well, how about them? Anyway, four, at 14 years old, I taken each one on their 14th birthday to the jewelry store in, in Beverly Hills, and mm -hmm. I get them a little ring, you know, 500 or less, and uh, they get it, and they're excited, and I say, well, you can't have it yet. And we go and we sit down at a cafe, oh. and I say, I will, mm, I get emotional, but I say, uh, girls, you're 14 now. Uh, the little boys who are your age, they're very curious little, you know, lab technicians and they're poking and they're prodding and they're trying to figure out things like that. Don't be a, a lab rat, if you will. You are okay. worth, you're worth waiting for. So wait until you find someone who loves you and you love them. Yeah. And then you just hope and pray that it lasts as long as possible. So, and it, I think it's done well. Okay. Yeah. Well, when can they put the rings on? Uh, they get it right then. Once they say, okay, and, and they, I cry my way through it, and when, when the awkward moment is over, right. then they get the ring, and they try to get out of there as fast as possible. <laughs> so, but what is your, um, uh, what is your love life? It, it, there is none. Now my, my honestly, I, I don't mean the canned answer, but uh, the three, the three of them, you know, is as much attention as I can give, other than I'm working my. But you're walking around, and girls are looking. Well, plus I mean, you're a bush, you're bush single, in the bush. You're single. Let's, get, let's make this easy. Go get coffee. You got your show. I got my show. What are we doing? <laughs> let's cut through all the, all the, all the craziness here, Billy, because um, I keep getting wrapped up. Look. It's what, your show. Is there Wendy any? Wendy Williams show. We can sit here as long. That's as why I'm, I'm not. I'm ignoring Doug. Your security look. guy's looking at me. I'm not really. If she wants to go, we'll go. Look, um, is there anything that you would have done differently in the back of the bus on that fateful day with our President Trump? I don't know. It's a live moment, and I wish, you know, I wish I had at least what? kept my mouth shut. I wish. I don't know. It's a. When you're in a moment, you're in a you moment. You never know how you're going to react. You didn't say anything though. Bad. You just laughed along with it, yeah. and people got pissed a fateful laugh. Yeah. So maybe you wouldn't have laughed. Maybe, uh, yeah. You would have I mean, given him the stone face. I would have been, yep. You just said something so outrageous and I'm just gonna stare at you. Yeah. <laughs> Is that what you would have advised the two girls that were interviewing T.I. who laughed like hyenas? Isn't that something? Mm -hmm. They walked out of that studio saying to themselves, oh my God, we just got the best moment with T.I. Oh, it's gonna be everywhere, it's so good. This is great for us. And then hours later, boom. They are Not in the great. viral shame tank and they can't believe what happened to them. They read the moment totally wrong. But the thing is, the difference between what they did is that they did it now, you did it three years ago, and time has moved on so much. 
people will forget about that by next week. I think so. I think so. And you see other people in our business have a moment. And then if people hang on long enough, their moment, and they want them, you know, Lara or Amy Robeck or whatever, they, they have a moment, it goes. Are you tired of people asking about the bus thing? Uh-huh. <laughs> but you realize you've got to do that perp walk for about a year. I guess. You know, I, listen, I just like being with you, and whatever you want to talk about is good by me. Thank you, Billy. Thank you for being here, everybody. Uh, watch Extra Like Me every weekday. Check your local listings. Give it up for the Bush Bush, Billy Bush. We'll be right back. Except for you, come along. How you doing? Uh, hi, Wendy. How you doing? Are you having a good time? I'm having a wonderful time. Thank this you. This is my birthday wish. Oh, well, where's your tiara? Oh, girl, I left that. I need to get here on time. Oh. <laughs> on time, Wendy. All right. So, what's your name? Where are you from? What do you do? I'm Tiffany. I'm from Baltimore. Oh. I'm a coordinator. I'm 33 years old. Okay. I'm dating a um, dating a guy. He's in his 50s. Okay. Um, for seven months. Two months ago, he proposed. However, he asked me for a threesome before we tied a knot. I said, it hasn't been a year yet. Let me think about it. Is that concerning to you? Yeah, you don't ask those two questions in the same <laughs> sentence. I know. Thing. I know. All right, so, but you've only been dating him. He's, he's 50, how old? 51. Okay, has he ever been married? Does no. he have children? One child. Okay, now what's his deal with threesome? He, he, he enjoys them or he's never done one? He never had one. Okay, well, uh, it's very inappropriate. I mean, I can appreciate him being honest with himself, but he doesn't have to be that honest with you. Right. But, like, he should have taken care of that before he got with you. Yes. Number one, number one. Have you ever been in a threesome? No, no. Do, no. do you care about being with another woman? Um, I thought about it, but I don't know. I don't know, Wendy. I don't so you could be switched. I could be switched if it was my husband, not my boyfriend. Oh. I don't know. Yeah. Well, you all were meant for each other. <laughs> um. So, what is your actual question to me? Should I be concerned that he want a threesome before we get married? Yes, and you should be concerned that you want a threesome after you get married. Yeah. All right. Oh. Put this on. We can take it home with you. Good luck. Come on. Okay, come over here. Top that. Oh. <laughs> Mine is quite not as exciting as hers, but how you doing, Wendy? My I'm... name is Jason, and I'm from Miami, Florida. Okay. I have a question for you. Okay. So I have a 15-year-old daughter okay. um, that recently told me she has a boyfriend. Um, I don't know how to handle it. Her mother and I both co-parent very well. Uh, you were I, married at one point? I was married at one point. Okay. Now I'm remarried. Why did, why did you get divorced? Uh, we separ she left me, we separated. Why? Uh, well, I'm gay now, honey, so. <laughs> oh, and he's right there? What you doing? Oh, okay. <laughs> All right now. All right now. Um, he, he beat you, by the way. Oh. Okay, were you gay when you married her to begin with? I'm just uh, curious. I kinda knew, wasn't 100% sure yet what was going on. You were we gay married very, very young. Okay. Yeah. So a 15 year old having a boyfriend is not a big deal. Jason, mm -hmm. it doesn't mean she's having sex or doing anything weird. This mm -hmm. is your time as a father mm -hmm. to speak to her about the value of her. You know, right. don't have the sex. You know, it's not important. Um, you know, French kissing is important, but it, look for the sores on the mouth. Oh, no! No, 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 you're gonna, you're gonna wrap it down about these STDs out here. Oh. Between hepatitis, the herpes, the syphilis, it's not just an AIDS thing anymore, yeah. you know, where people think yeah. all you need is a condom and you're good. You're right. Okay? Yeah. You talk to your daughter about young men. All right, okay? I'll do that. And, and, and let her live her life, Dad. Ooh. And congr... At 15? So how did your wife react <laughs> when you came to her and said, how you doing? How you doing? Uh... You know what, we're good now, but it, it was kind of hard at the beginning, but I, we're good now. We're, we co-parent well, we're really good friends, actually, so. We work through all that. Thank you, Jason. Thank you so much. Um, up next, everybody, we're playing Drop It Like It's Hot, Don't Go Far. Yeah.
play Drop It Like It's Hot Topics. Yeah. Now, Crystal is our uh, person today. She's from Washington, D.C., and she's got a chance to win up to $1,500. But before we get to a game, I understand you plan a yearly trip here, and you were on Ask Wendy 10 years ago? I do, I do. This is my annual trip, Wendy. Wendy, I can't go a year without seeing you. Live. Woo! Crystal, do you remember 10 years ago what your problem was and you asked me? Somebody stole my leopard print pumps. You remember that? <laughs> and, and what'd I tell you? You told me to confront them. Did you confront? I did. Are they still cool with you? No. Oh. <laughs> That's the problem with confrontation, okay. Uh, Crystal, you ready to drop it like it's hot? Yes! All right, Woo! music please. Pick up your pucks, let's go. Drop it like it's hot. Drop it like it's hot. When the pigs try to get at you. Park it like it's hot. Park it like it's hot. Park it like it's hot. And if it get an attitude, pop it like it's hot. 750 bucks from Bethany Frankel. Here's your question about Bethany. What was the first reality show she appeared on and go? I, I got this. Oh, oh really? No, no, no. Real Housewives of New York City. No. No? No, well, she was on Martha Stewart's. Uh, oh, the, the, oh, Apprentice, the, Apprentice. No, you only no. get one guess and you got yeah. it wrong. <laughs> so look though, you don't get the, two hundred, or the $750, but Crystal, what you do get is dinner for two at one of my favorites, Serendipity. Yeah. Here Enjoy that today after the show. We'll be right back. <laughs> Latisse, you hold this okay. because you are my eye candy. Yeah. How you doing? How you doing? <laughs> Apparently not a frequent watcher. Sorry. Um, she's from New Jersey, what part? I'm from Malimbra. Okay, and I see that you are a brand marketing person? Yes, for a footwear company, sneakers at that. Oh, okay, <laughs> just saying. Just saying. All right, quickly tell me about your look. I love the necklace. Thank I you. love the, your vest, yes. the skirt, the boots. I Go. wanted to give you luxury, what it appears to be luxury, okay? So I started off with cute and cozy with my vest, a statement necklace, copper on copper, you off. copper on copper, and of course, thigh high boots. Uh -huh. Wonderful. Enjoy your Diva fan. We'll be right back. <laughs> Sorry, I'm talking to Joanne because her husband drives me regularly. Carl. <laughs> nice <laughs> to free. Go to wendyshow.com. We'll be right back. Yeah. I am done. I love you for watching. See you next time. Nice.